Well, I'm now joined by Natalie Jeresko, who's a former finance minister for Ukraine. Good afternoon, Natalie. Good afternoon. Well, I'm sure you've been listening in there to, to the idea that uh, citizens of Kiev are being told to make Molotov cocktails, given machine guns. What are your thoughts as you see what's being wrought on your country by Russia? I think what's happening is hideous and it should never have been allowed to begin. Most importantly, we need to end it now. Ukrainians are extraordinarily resolute, resilient. I can't convince my friends and colleagues to leave. They will not go because they want to defend their peace and freedom. Mm. And I don't think the Kremlin understood what they were up against. Well, that's fascinating. Just pick you up on two of, the, two of those points you've made there, because we heard from Sasha, who fled Kiev to go to Lviv, and she was saying she'd never considered herself a refugee. She'd never thought that she would have to consider herself a refugee, but she was absolutely determined to stay and fight and you know make Molotov cocktails or whatever needed to be done. So that resilience is extraordinary, isn't it? It is indeed. And what we need as the West, as the democratic countries is to show the same resoluteness and the same resilience. And we have not done that yet. And so we, we're wasting time. Well, what do you have in mind then? What Because there's sanctions on the table. They've been beefed up. The EU's discussing extra sanctions, hitting Putin in the pocket. What more do you want? What, what, call it out. I guess I want massive and I want it immediate. It's urgent. Hundreds of people are dying. Orphanages, kindergartens, residential buildings are being bombed. People are dying. These are war crimes, and we need to act with a in resolute way. So, number one, yes, financial sanctions. Start with the Central Bank of Russia. We have not yet sanctioned it. Sanction all the state-owned banks of Russia and sanction them without exception. Sanction the energy companies, the state oil companies, without exception. Remove Russia from the SWIFT system. Remove them from the Visa, the MasterCard system. Remove them from the world of finance as we know it entirely without exception and do it now. Sanction the individuals, yes, all the members of the Duma, all the members of the Russian National Security Council, all the members of the Russian cabinet and all their families. Yes, cancel all the visas of Russian students, Russian visitors, expel their diplomats from our countries. Why do they get to live in peace and freedom if they will not allow Ukrainians to breathe in peace and freedom? We need to act now before more people die. Well, so when you see EU divisions over the SWIFT payment system, to take just one of the things in that long list you set out, what do you say to them? I say the United States did it by itself, if I understand, with Iran. So anyone willing should go ahead. And the ones who remain behind, time and history will show whose side of this war they were on, just as time and history showed in World War II. The other part of this is very clear. Ukrainians are defending themselves. No one wants NATO boots on the ground. Although some of us may not agree with that, I understand it. So you you would case, like NATO troops on the ground, would you? I, I would like someone to help Ukraine. And I'm happy not to have NATO troops on the ground if instead the West provides the military support that Ukraine needs. They need anti-aircraft uh, equipment. They need stingers. They need drones. They need ammunition. Let the Ukrainians defend themselves. They are more than willing. They are more than prepared. Every single person is prepared to defend their country. But Help them do so now. But if you're piling in ammunition, you're risking pouring oil on the conflagration, aren't you? No, no. The, the conflagration is full blown. That argument may have worked, although I disagree with it, prior to the announced invasion, unprovoked aggression. Right now, they are bombing. They are marking the tops of buildings with fluorescent paint and bombing them. There is nothing more than the conflagration we see right now. They have, they, they, they are, they are, they are using all of their might, and they have some superiority in air, for example, or other. You, 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 you can either let Ukrainians die, or you can stand with democracy. Moreover, moreover, when, when. If we fail, if we allow Ukraine to fail, God forbid, he will move on and you will be involved anyway. I mean, you're Help understandably you. you're understandably angry and upset. Are you angry that repeated warnings from Ukraine, from the Baltic states about what Russia was capable of, appear to have gone unheeded? It's not even 
warnings from Ukraine, the Baltic states, let's be clear, Putin invaded Georgia in 2008. We did nothing. He invaded Crimea and then Donbass in 2014. We did practically nothing. He destroyed human beings all over Syria. We did nothing. He allowed for Belarus to become uh, completely unfree. We did nothing. He killed his opposition in the streets of London with polonium. We did nothing. He interfered in our elections, in different Western elections. We did nothing. What more do we need to know? He has finally announced that he would like to eliminate an entire nation, that he does not believe that we have a right to exist. The blood is clearly on his hands. He's not hiding it. Let us not allow the blood to be on our hands as well. Natalie Juresko, Ukraine's former finance minister. Thank you very much.